I'm gonna show you guys how I cut and style my curtain bangs at home. I filmed like a little TikTok makeup video, so I feel pretty, so I was like, this is a perfect time to film. Disclaimer, of course, because all the cosmetologists, the estheticians, the hairstylists, they all like to freak out. Whenever I make one of these videos doing things to myself that you should probably go to a professional for, I have been asked to do this video multiple times, so I'm going to show you how I do it. If you decide to follow this video, that is on you. If you mess up your hair, that is on you. Okay? I still say you should go to a professional, but whenever I go to a professional get my curtain bangs done, I always end up doing them when I get home because they never do them the way that I like them. So I'm going to show you how I do my own curtain bangs. It's pretty simple. And then I'm going to show you how I style them because it's also pretty simple. I'm not a hairdresser. I'm a girl who does things to her own hair, nails, skin, face, you know. I'm a DIY girl at heart. When I go and get stuff done, I a lot of times don't like it, so I figured out how to do stuff on my own. And that's like pretty much my entire channel at this point. I am going to take just my curtain bangs. I have front layers as well. This isn't a video on how to cut curtain bangs. This is literally just how I maintain them because they do grow out pretty quickly. I swear they completely grow out in a month and I'm just like, I don't want to go to the hairstylist every single month because if that would be the case, I'd have to drive two hours to my hairstylist every single time because she lives two hours away. It's really hard to find a hairstylist that really knows how to feather out and thin out the ends of hair. I've had some not so good times with getting haircuts and stuff like at Supercuts for example or from just a number of other stylists that they were better at coloring than cutting. If you're gonna go get a haircut, definitely try and find someone that is a professional in hair cutting because everyone has their favorite thing. Like all hairdressers, they have like their favorite thing. Some are really good at balayages, some are good at coppers, some are good at cutting hair, some are good at layers, some are good at bobs. Like everyone's good at something, so you have to find a person that's good at what you want. They all don't do the same thing respectfully but they don't. That is what I have learned. Okay, let's be good and section off the rest of our hair instead of just leaving it behind my ears. This is the section that I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to be using thinning shears. I saw TikTok a long time ago on this guy twirling hair and cutting it and making like front round layers. So I did that with my curtain bangs one day after I got them cut, but I didn't like them because they weren't short enough and they were great. So I don't know the science behind it. I don't know how it comes out good. Hopefully it comes out good. I truly don't know if it's gonna come out good every single time I do it. I'm gonna twist them. The thing with bangs is you never wanna pull. If you pull, they're gonna pounce back up. You have to go like this much longer than where you think you want them always do long. The amount of videos I've seen of people going like this and cutting and it poofs up and they act shocked. And I'm like, the internet has been around so long. How does everyone not know not to do that yet? So I'm here to tell you, please don't do that. Make sure there's no knots and that it's smooth. And yes, I'm doing this on dry hair. Thinning shears work better when I do it on dry hair. I've done it on wet and it didn't come out as good. So I'm gonna twist it and at an angle like this, I'm gonna cut it a few times. I'm just gonna take this brush and brush it out. Now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. My cats are being weird. I hear noises. So, that's literally what I do. But I'm feeling crazy today, so I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. It somehow works. I don't know, I don't know how it works. If you're not gonna style your curtain bangs, don't do it. If you have like somewhat of a wave pattern, you can really get away with not styling curtain bangs. Like I can get away with it cause I have volume naturally in my roots. So after I wash my hair, my hair poofs up and it naturally like gets that like that, but sometimes I'm like, ugh, I need to style them. If you have pin straight hair and you don't want to style your hair every day, don't even get curtain bangs, okay? Because you're gonna hate it. If you don't like to style it every day, you're gonna just be frustrated. Also, if you don't know how to style them, I am gonna show it to you in this video, but if you don't know how to style hair, well, like if it doesn't come to you naturally, practice, practice before you cut them. Just practice, do it every day for a week, and if you're sick of it, then don't get the bangs. I feel like that's a good way to tell if you're dedicated enough to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna take 
the middle section right here. You know, I've been seeing wispy bangs. I have wanted wispy bangs for a fat minute, so I'm gonna give myself just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I instantly got that like drop in my stomach. I'm gonna take hair cutting scissors and I'm gonna cut into that. Like I was holding that down to here, it seemed like, and they pumped up and when they pump up, it's already up to here. Ooh, I look like a mysterious French artist. And I love it. With the shears, it's almost hard for it to be choppy because it's thinning out your end so much, it's hard for it to look choppy because it's like thinning it out. That's why I like using the shears, honestly. But like you can see, it already has like the shape. Like, I like this, this is good, I'm gonna stop. And honestly, I feel like stopping when you're ahead is so much better than just keep going at it with bangs. I don't know if I wanna trim my front layers. I kinda want to, just to show you guys what I do. Okay, I'm gonna take a section right behind the curtain bangs. I really gotta section off the curtain bangs first. Okay, this is the section right behind the curtain bangs, the front facing layers. I have so much more hair on this side of my head than that side. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna twist and hack away. Twisting it in the opposite direction. Trying to show you within the hair. Hard to see, but you can see right here and right here, like I have cuts in my hair, but it blends itself. It's foolproof. You know? Also, I'm just saying this now. Be careful with these things because it looks like you're not doing anything, but if you cut up here, you're gonna have little baby hairs sticking out everywhere. Do your research on thinning shears before you use them. Don't just go hacking away at your hair because I've seen so many videos of people just cutting up here and I'm like, you're gonna have baby hairs for the next like two years of your life. Now I'm gonna style my hair. My curtain bangs always last more if I blow dry them when they're wet. So I always spray my hair wet if it's not because it just makes the style last so much longer. I'm gonna smooth out all of the frizz and if you have a wave pattern by going like this a couple times. After I have it dry and smoothed down, I'm going to take it and I'm going to be rolling this section back. For this section, I go in with a bigger roller. I get a pack of bigger and smaller ones just from Amazon. I'll have them linked down below. And you wanna roll that in the same exact direction that you just blow dried it. So we're gonna do the same exact thing for the bangs, getting them wet. Heat protectant just totally left my mind. I forgot to include it in the other part. Bangs especially is so important to put heat protectant on because you're going to be styling them more often. You want to make sure you're using heat protectant on them because you especially don't want the shorter pieces on your head to get breakage and start to break and that's going to ride up and then you're gonna have breakage super high up and that's like the last thing you want because it takes forever to grow out. I'm just gonna take my Color Wow Dream Coat I've recently just been using the Color Wild Dream Coat because it does have heat protectant in it, but it helps smooth down frizz if you deal with that when you blow dry your hair. My favorite heat protectant that is just a heat protectant that I've come across is the one by Maria Nilla, and it's Cream Heat Spray. And I like this one because most heat protectants I have tried, usually you can like feel in your hair and it feels like you have product in your hair and I hate that feeling. So again, we're going to blow dry in both directions drying the bangs, smoothing down the frizz, and then I will be doing my bangs under. This is how I've been doing it recently. I don't know why. It looks really great. You guys will see. I let them sit in the roller just for a few seconds. And this is exactly why you cut them longer than you want because it pumps up so much. And earlier, they came down to here. I've seen so many people take out a roller and then their hair is like up to here and it looks like crazy. The rule of thumb with rollers is the higher up you hold it, the more volume you're gonna have. Because if it's super high up, you're gonna have a big giant bevel right here at your roots. 
Ah, I don't really hold it up because I don't really want that much volume in my roots because then I'm gonna look crazy. And I'm rolling the roller under because that is the way that we blow dried it. And I kind of just let it sit on my forehead. I usually don't pin that one into place. I usually style my bangs first before I get ready. I do my skincare, my makeup. You just wanna wait long enough that they are no longer warm to the touch. You wanna make sure they are completely cooled down. Depending on how long you're ready, it can be 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes like two hours. It really depends. The least amount you wanna leave them in is like 10 minutes. I will link in the description my blowout tutorial. My hair is just naturally dried and brushed a million times, so it's just a little wavy. But in my blow video, I talk about how to get the style to last longer because I know that's a lot of people's biggest issue with it not staying and curtain bangs, they like to fall. They really do, especially if it's like humid or sticky outside. Go on with mousse on your wet hair before you blow dry it. This is the favorite one that I've tried. I'm not really the biggest fan of mousse. It just gives me like too much texture and it feels like gross, like there's like a bunch of product in my hair. Another product that gives your hair texture Texture, but it's like a little less crazy than mousse to me is the Amica blowout spray You barely have to use any of this stuff. It gives your hair texture and it helps it to hold It's kind of like those sea salt sprays that literally everyone used to use in like I don't even know what that was like 2013 I feel like everyone used to use those sea salt sprays and then after you take them out and stuff you can put in hairspray I personally don't like hairspray and most just aerosol spray type of things dry out my hair a lot this is my favorite that I have tried even though I don't like hairspray this is like the one that I like that's like not gonna make your hair crunchy but still help it hold now I don't use hairspray but if I have to use something if like my hair isn't holding at all the IGK Ocean Spray. I forget the name of it, but I'm gonna put it right here. This stuff is great for getting hair to hold. It gives it that texture. I know a lot of hairstylists use this in your hair after they like do the beach wavy curls. And then one of my favorite tricks that I actually don't really do that much anymore because I don't use dry shampoo anymore is just putting dry shampoo on it. But this IGK Direct Flight Multitasking Matcha Dry Shampoo. This is my favorite dry shampoo. I've used it when I'm blonde to when I had like almost black hair. There's no white cast at all, which is really important to me when doing dry shampoo because I hate when there's like white cast and it looks like your hair is growing in gray. This one is the lighter version. They have crazier versions. This one doesn't feel like I have a bunch of stuff in my roots and doesn't make my hair feel grosser after I use it. When I use a dry shampoo, I want my hair to feel less greasy and less gross. Majority of times when I use dry shampoo, my hair feels even grosser after and then my hair just like looks nasty. I stopped using dry shampoo about like six, seven months ago now. I was just focusing more on scalp health and at the end of the day, dry shampoo just isn't good for your scalp. I know that this stuff is good. It's just a personal choice. If you use dry shampoo, I would definitely suggest trying the IGK one. It's been long enough and I'm impatient. So just, I shake them out a little bit and I do this movement thing. Ignore, yeah, this looks kind of stupid with the rest of my hair, but it's okay. You guys get it. You guys can see that the curtain bangs look good. So this is just the curtain bang. And you can see, boop, no weird lines, you know? I'm so happy I cut them shorter over here. That's like quite a bit of hair gone. My hair looks so much lighter. It does help the style to stay since my hair is thinned out because my hair isn't like being weighed down as much. So then it stays. Bye. I don't know if you like the way I put my words together, but I need you to stick with me just like some birds of feathers. My